Greetings, my friends. We are all interested in the future, for that is where you and I are going to spend the rest of our lives. And remember, my friend, future events such as these will affect you in the future. With these immortal words of Plan 9 from Outer Space, I am now beginning this somewhat unusual episode where I am not actually talking about artificial intelligence, but about a thing of the past which I always sort of wanted to have. Now that what you're seeing here is essentially a sort of transportable lisp machine, if you so will uh, call it. This is a, first of all, a typewriter, a Brother EP44, which happens to have a DB25 a serial port, which you can actually see here. Uh, come on, just plug yourself. There you go. So, it's a female serial port. You need a little adapter to DB9. And then, uh, just a second. That's pretty hard to fix. All right. And then you can connect it to a serial port on an Arduino, finally. Like this thing is going like right over here. And then, uh, it is going into this little carton box, which I will explain for a moment, and then it's going to the Due. That's an Arduino Due, which is actually my favorite Arduino, as it is sort of, in my opinion, the most powerful one. And it also has, a, has an adapter for a micro SD card, which is over here. The whole thing is actually being powered through this port, through this um, essentially phone charging battery. It turned out to be a not very good choice as it is a smart battery, which means it turns off if too little power is drawn from it. So I had the issue that this thing was actually spontaneously resetting. I found a way of fixing it though, by simply letting my phone be charged as well. That is just going to draw sufficient power to keep this thing awake. Now, how do I power the typewriter? Well, it does have a, you know, a connection for power there behind, but it's sort of, you know, unwieldy to always carry this adapter with you. Batteries would have been the other option, and essentially this thing is made to have batteries, but unfortunately, oh, come on, fix yourself here. But unfortunately, the, the batteries were large D batteries and they were to be set into this compartment here behind. I found another solution. It, came to my mind that the six volt battery supply is essentially not far away from the five volt which USB is providing. So I just connected here, I cut open a USB cable and I just connected it to the battery terminals. So now the typewriter is being actually powered by the phone battery. Moreover, I had another issue. The serial port was unpleasantly close to the ground and in some other configurations essentially I had other uh, little machines which were going deeper than, than there was space. So in order to not strain the port I took some caps of um, some pens, such light pens, and glued them as little feet which left me with enough space uh, at the center of this typewriter to create this little capsule. And inside this little capsule, I actually can put this little compartment and I can thereby transport the Arduino Duet together with the typewriter. Now, 
Um, how do I fix the paper roll? Well, this thing did have originally some sort of paper roll fixation mechanism, which, however, I don't own. So what did I do? As you can see, I glued everything with tape. I used um, ice cream sticks and sushi sticks. Yeah, why not? So now I have fixed here a paper roll, which was sent to me by a gentleman named Alain from France. And this thing, I guess, is 40 years old. So <laughs> I'm actually sort of lucky that it still works. So let's check it out how it is supposed to actually work. Now, first of all, we will need to set in some paper. We'll set this whole thing. We can set it to typewriter mode or terminal mode. We will go back to normal, all right? Now we are in typewriter mode. This whole thing is on, yep. And then we just pull the paper. Come on, pull it, pull it, pull it. Now we need to try that with one arm. It's not too easy. Ah, yeah, I see it. Okay. Okay, so we have paper now. And essentially, we could even type something. Let's say... Hello. And... I'm not sure you will see that, but it really did type hello over here. Come on, fix it sharper be so hard okay, there we have our hello very nice now that we have done that it's time to switch over to the Arduino now on this Arduino Due is running MuLisp or MicroLisp created by a splendid gentleman named David Johnson Davies and he has created a variety of the Lisp programming language for Arduino microcontrollers. And I use this as the software for this Arduino Due, slightly adapted it so that it does not send print commands too quickly. That is not to send print commands quicker than the typewriter can actually type. Um, and with this software, basically, I'm driving this Arduino Due, which is then going to drive over this serial port, this typewriter, which we will now set into terminal mode. So we go to terminal, okay. And we're first of all offline. Now it's time to fix the terminal settings. Uh, you press mode. And then you're pressing enter until you get the setting you wish. We need a baud rate of 1200. And then you can, you know, check these other things. You, you don't need to change anything else, though I like to change that one too. But essentially you're set then. Now you can say continue. Okay. Now that we have set up the terminal, it's time to reset the Arduino. And we should be greeted by MicroLisp. And we are, there it is. I think I better lift up this cover so you can see the paper roll without the reflection. So there we are in Lisp. We are having around 10,000 cons cells free. And we can do here, you know, Lispy things. Now, David has wisely foreseen the possibility that you might wish to save something. And indeed, I wrote a sort of editor for this Lisp dialect. Uh, in particular for this combination with this terminal. And I'm going to load that now with the command load image. All right. Some nearly 300 con cells have been loaded, and now my editor is there. I'll demonstrate the editor in a second, but 
essentially, I want to show you that this is really, for all practical purposes we're interested in, a normal Lisp system. Let's say we define a function to add one to the argument, which is given. Be fun. Play L of X. And that shall give us uh -huh, plus one X. So there we go, we now have actually our function. Uh -huh. this, this thing is getting stuck a little. Let's liberate it a little. Okay, very good. So we're having here our function and we can use it. Now let's say we're saying PL out of six will give us seven indeed. Okay, very nice. So as you see, David has created an amazing piece of software, which when you're combining it with the right antique hardware, is actually giving you a fully capable computing system. I mean, no jokes. Uh, on the IBM 7090, if I'm correct, you had around 30,000 con cells. And early programs such as um, SIR or the semantic network of Quillian or the like had had to be handled with 30,000 con cells. So you're having a third of that, which is not too bad. And well, <laughs> I just love this thing. It's like a blast from the past. Okay, now that I have in general explained it, let me show you the editor. I have the little issue here that backspace doesn't erase characters. So it just adds the backspace character to whatever you have been typing. That's a little bit unfortunate. In particular, it means you can't correct anything. And if you have made a mistake uh, way towards the end of a definition of a function, it is sort of annoying. So I wrote something where you basically build your function chunk by chunk and you are appending um, your, your present chunk to what you wrote before that. It's sort of like a um, read eval print loop prompt. Just it uh, demands that you explicitly request evaluation. That, that will protect you from some mistakes. I'll show it now to you. It is called Packwards. Mm. Packwards. All right. Yeah, very well. As you can already notice, uh, maybe we can pull it out. It's not easily seen, but I think you can see something. Uh, these are the sort of the editor commands you're having, and which and whose initials actually make up the name. And now I can type anything I want, essentially. I could say, uh, mm, let's say, let, let's demonstrate to you that it doesn't work immediately and that you need to say evaluation explicitly. Let's say plus four and five. It did notice that you want to do that and it recorded it, but it has not yet evaluated it. And now you can say evaluate. And it evaluates it correctly to nine. And, well, I'm not sure you can write a great novel with that, but for the definition of simple functions, it is actually quite sufficient. <laughs> so, what I did with this thing was essentially I fulfilled a childhood dream to own a terminal. And let, let's actually do something more interesting. Now that we have added two numbers, let's actually define a function. Let's say, we compare which number is bigger than which other. Okay, we say defun, let's call this thing simply f. Uh, we have two numbers, x and y. And we say, uh, if x is larger, oh, very well, where is the larger sign? Uh -huh. Not quite used to this thing, I admit. 
Ah, there we go. Where how am I going to reach that though? Okay, I'll have to borrow a finger here. <laughs> okay, because that's on second shift. If larger, okay, if larger x than y, say the result shall be one. Okay. And if it is the other way, okay, second shift y and x, let the result be 2 and well, let's say that that that's what we so far know about our function and we just simply you know enter it and i think it needs one more brace yes okay one more penalties so this thing now saw our not quite finished function definition and memorized it okay we also want, however, to add for the third case that the two numbers are equal, which means we need one more definition, which will be in all other cases, which would be here. Due to the software, I have said that true is not just T, but double T, all right? That that was just a specialty that I had to handle here, but normally that would be just simply true, okay? We're going to say, Zero. No, nobody's bigger. Okay, fine. So it's prompting you with its commands. It's showing you the function definition it has already understood. And yeah, well, there is one for the command we need to execute in order to save this. As it should be. The editor commands I will not go really into here, but essentially we now have our function, okay? So we now have our function f and we want that evaluated. Yeah, when it greets you like that with an empty definition, it means that whatever you evaluated before that actually works. So we'll now say f from eight and nine. So it got what we want. And now we may evaluate it again. And the result is two, which is correct. Nine is bigger than eight, right? So I now have something on which I can write and edit and save Lisp programs. If, if I'm actually fed up with this editor, I can say simply this to quit it. That's it. We're back here at the prompt. Actually, our defined function, of course, still works. Let's say f66 is zero. Absolutely correct. And yeah, and I'll have a terminal. And of course you can make one too. Just a few pitfalls I want to mention. Arduino seem to have a problem with a baud rate of, let's say below 600. So the popular 300 baud rate can be problematic because some of them seem to generate messy signals. And when you set it for 300, in particular some Chinese clones, will not generate 300. So that's why I set mine to 1200. Moreover, my Arduino clone didn't work uh, correctly with the, with the normal serial port. So I had to put it on the serial port three. So if you get such weird behavior, just simply try out which one of those here 
is going to, to work out for you. Other than that, it's actually now that I have done it, not quite simple, not a big deal at all. <laughs> well, and yeah, this thing fits nicely in there. So it could be hidden. And what you know what I'll do one day is I'll, anyway, I'll pop up with this machine in some sort of, you know, Mac cafe or something like that. <laughs> it will be just terribly entertaining. So thank you very much for watching and see you next time. Goodbye.